Hello, thank you so much for stopping by to hang out with me today. I'm Lisa, and in today's video, we're gonna go over some of my favorite designers and dresses from those designers from the 1960s and 1970s. Um, these are all more boho inspired types of pieces. And the reason why I thought it might be helpful to do this, this is not meant to be some sort of like a show and tell look at my collection. That's not my motive. Um, but we're seeing boho. It's been quite a big trend for the last few years now. We see brands like Christy Dawn, Chasing Unicorns, Dones, Bell and the Gypsy, Reformation, just to name a few that are really grabbing a lot of styles, whether it's silhouette or fabric style, fabric types, I should say, from the 70s and even the late 60s. And so I know more people are getting into looking for true vintage pieces from those eras, as well as a lot of my fellow seamstresses are really getting into sewing a lot of 1960s, 1970s style pieces, whether you're using true vintage patterns, vintage re-releases as McCall, Simplicity, and Vogue are now starting to re-release those amazing patterns from the 60s, 70s. And then also a lot of our indie pattern designers are also making some really cool patterns that I think are heavily inspired from the 70s and even late 60s. And so I thought it'd be helpful to show you guys some designers and fabric type and dress styles. So maybe you have some inspiration, whether you want to look for these true vintage items, you know some brands to look for now, or if you're wanting to recreate looks, now you maybe know of some brands or fabric styles to look for. So in today's video, we're just gonna go over the brands and the actual pieces themselves. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna make a separate video going over some actual patterns that you can pick up as well as fabric that you can use to really recreate some of these looks yourself. Um, and we'll also maybe look into other 70s styles too in that follow up video. But I just thought I'd show you guys what I specifically have as I can at least speak to these items. So anyhow, actually I should show you all what I'm wearing first. This is a Lance dress. Um, this is probably late 60s. Um, Lance did not actually make a lot of maxi dresses, but this was just a gem I did manage to find, I think, on Poshmark. And here you can get an idea of the fabric type, the colorway. Lots of warm tones were really popular in the 70s. Um, and you also find that this more empire waist silhouette, or at least a waist with ties, was often found in a lot of 70s dresses to kind of give you more of an hourglass kind of feminine silhouette. Whereas the 60s are a lot of shift dresses, very mod era. 70s is kind of going back into um, some of these, you know, flowier types of styles, but also they hunch, cinch a little bit into the waist. Not every piece, but a lot of them were. So this is just to give you an idea of the silhouette and the fabric type. This is most likely a cotton um, lawn, or maybe even a cotton boil, or boil, however you want to pronounce it. And again, in the sewing video, I'll go much more into a deep dive of the fabric type and things, um, as well as structure of the garment. Today, I just want to kind of go through the pieces and give you some ideas. So this next one is a Demi Sachs. Um, here's a label, just so you know what to look for. You can see a nice little Peter Pan collar, some flutter sleeves, very sheer fabric. This um, off actually looks like a print you'd see on a kind of a Christy Dawn dress. And you can see lots of lace detail. We've got these ribbons here and then we have a waist tie in the back. And this is more of a midi length of a dress. So these sheer fabrics were very popular. It's kind of a, you could look for a cotton boil or cotton lawn um, to recreate these looks. And um, you can just kind of get some ideas. A lot of trim was often used as well, a lot of lace trim and also ribbon trim. So this next one, and again, I'm gonna to try to go as quick as I can just so we're not here all day. Um, this I actually thought was a handmade dress <laughs> and I just noticed the tag for a reason today, which is crazy because I've owned this dress, I think for like four or five years now. Um, the brand of this dress is called the Art Shirt. Um, and just so you can get an idea of the colorways, the fabric, the design, um, just a nice square neckline. These are just fake buttons here, just a, uh, I think you call it a facade button. Um, and then here, this is an empire waist, the ties in the back, and of course we've got pockets. And we can see they matched up the pattern design here. And this is more of a midi length dress. And this would be just like, almost feels like a quilting cotton. And then here, our next dress. This is what I also believe, I shouldn't say also, I believe this is a gunny sack dress. It's missing an actual designer tag, but the size tag looks like the gunny. And there is an actual true gunny sacks pattern that's come out. I'll go over it in the next video that you can use to make this pretty much almost exact same design. 
but here we can get an idea of the silhouette style. We've got the square here, uh, balloon sleeves. This is kind of a kind of a cotton gauze meets muslin type of fabric. See, we've got the waist ties. You can see that the ties don't start on the side. They start towards the front of the bodice and then you can cinch in the waist again. And then we've got the tiered skirt detail. And this is a maxi dress. Um, and just so you can see the back. I will say one thing with the 70s dresses, they were incredibly long. I'm five, two and a half. And um, <laughs> they're like four inches too long, not just two inches too long. So I often have to take them up or just wear very high heels. So if you are looking for an actual 70s piece, keep that in mind if you're on the shorter side. Or if you're using a 70s pattern, um, you might find that they're abnormally long. So this next brand here is Trivia by Charm of Hollywood. Just so you can see what that tag looks like. And they made a lot of cute kind of cottage core boho styles. I love this bell sleeve. This is a pretty sage green color maxi dress. You can see that um, the sun has definitely faded some of this, but I still love it. And then you'll find a lot of the 70s dresses have a ruffled um, tier at the bottom with lace. And here I'll bring it up close so you can see this lace detail. And again, we'll go into more detail of these dresses in the next video so you can get ideas of maybe lace trims and things to look for. Um, and of course, we have another tie in the back, but very cool style. Um, and I will say vintage is definitely getting much more expensive over time, especially with gunny sacks. Um, I find the best place to ever find deals on these is to find your local shops that sell vintage. Often they're priced a little bit more moderately than somewhere like on an eBay or Etsy for some of these. Um, this next one is another Gunny Sacks, and this was kind of iconic with the Gunny dresses. There was a lot of this patchwork style of fabric. You could call it ditzy floral or calico, depending on where you're from. Um, but here we've got the three different types of fabric, corset, bodice, lace trim. And this is very common with the gunnies, made them more iconic. This is an interesting pocket detail here. This is more of a midi length dress, and we can see here that they did a play on the fabric and the design here. And then um, I'll just show you the gunny tag. Just so you can, you know what to look for. This is a size nine. Um, I go between like a nine and a seven, sometimes an 11, depending on the style. And then here we have the ties in the back. And you can really recreate a look like this very easily if you just start using your fabric scraps, um, anything left over that you don't know what to do with, as long as they're kind of in a similar colorway, or they can be totally different and you can make, um, a very similar style of dress. But again, we'll go over some patterns and things to help you recreate these looks. And then we have another gunny. <laughs> um, this one here, and also I should say, I can't remember if I said this in the beginning or not. Um, I've collected these over the duration of maybe like seven years or so. So um, these have just been a slow and steady accumulation. Um, and they're items that I don't think I'll ever part with. I just love them. So another, another gunny sack dress here. Um, I like this little lace ruffle detail. This is not a common style for the gunny. And I love this little V back detail here. And then I have my little crinkled up tag just so you guys can see it really is a gunny <laughs> in case you guys are curious. Um, but I do like this V back detail. This would be also um, a cotton gauze like that maxi dress I showed you. Tie in the back, of course a ruffle. And you can see here as opposed to putting the lace on the hemline, they have the lace where the ruffle meets the bottom of the skirt. And this is just another lovely dress. And I love that one. Um, another gunny. <laughs> I think this is now, this is my last, no, second to last. Um, this is a maxi gunny. Um, and then we'll bring it up close so you can get an idea of what the fabric looks like. Sorry, my lighting's kind of getting crazy. I have skylights overhead and so I just can't control my lighting here, it's terrible living in a cabin in the mountains. It's just, it's a lost cause. Um, but here we can see the bodice. We've got the corset front here. We've got this nice pretty flutter sleeve that overlaps. I really wanna make something like this. Um, and just so you can kind of see some more of this detail here, get an idea of the prints, the trim. We see this ribbon here where the back ties here. Um, and then of course we've got some gathers in the skirt. And then I like this interesting panel here where we have white lace here, and then we just have a white um, cotton lawn or cotton voil fabric down the center just to kind of break up the monotony. So just very creative with their placement of their fabric and um, their lace detail and their ribbon detail. So 
Gunny sacks is just, it's getting very expensive, but um, if you can find a good deal on one, I found this at a local um, vintage clothing shop, and I think I got a pretty good deal on this one relative to gunny sacks. Um, but if you can find a good deal, they are quite a gem. If you can even just buy one vintage dress, especially if you're wanting to make them, it really helps you to better understand the construction of the garments so that you can mirror what they did at that time because they were quite talented seamstresses. This next one's pretty wild. This is called New Stutters. This is the brand. It was a <laughs> very wild um, brand from the, this is more of a 60s style dress, I would say. And let me see if I get the tag. Here we go. Just so you can see what the tag looks like. This is definitely made out of a, a poly cotton type of material. It's very heavy. I really don't like polyester, but this was just such a cool wild dress that I had to pick it up uh, a few years ago on Etsy. And then just so you can kind of see an idea of the back. So of course, no tie because this is such a thick fabric, you would not need to tie it in. Um, it has a lot of structure to it. So you will find a lot of the 70s dresses also that were made out of polyester were quite thick and had a lot of structure and are very hot to wear in the warmer months, even though this is a strappy dress. It's very toasty. Um, the new setters has some really funky prints. And then this next one here is, I almost forget this brand name, uh, Rhonda Roy. Rhonda Roy. So here you can see the tag here. And if you want to look more into tags and arrows, you can go to vintagefashionguild.org, I believe is a website. I'll link it um, up here where I'm putting the name of all of the designer brands. And you can definitely check that out, look up these brands, kind of know what to tags to look for to um, dial in the era too, if you'd like to do that. Um, and also I should say, this is not an exhaustive list of brands. These are just the ones I own and that I found um, hold up very well or well made and might be good reference points for you, whether you're sewing or want to buy something for yourself. So this is just a fun tiered skirt, um, almost kind of like a square dance style, but not quite. Um, and then it has this interesting corset bodice. I like the square neckline here and then how they mix and match the fabric where they have a, a splash of the same color red in here so that they can actually make the yellow work. So just some interesting ideas. Again, if you wanna make something or pick something up, um, I don't wear this one as often as I probably should. Um, here I dropped one. Okay, this next one is Jody T of California. This is very similar to a brand called Homespun, which is also a really fun brand you can look out for. Kind of like a gunny sacks, a little, getting a little expensive. So Jody T of California is a lot more friendly on the price point, at least it was when I got this a couple of years ago. Um, but this is just an idea of what to look for here. We've got the balloon sleeves, some shirt bodice detail, more of the patchwork style, and you can get an idea of some colorways to work with as lots of warm tones in the 70s, which I love <laughs> being um, kind of golden strawberry blonde hair and green eyes. I, I prefer the warm tones, but I know they're not for everyone. So that's why I thought it'd be helpful to show you guys maybe some of these dresses and you can make your own um, versions of them in the colorways you actually like too, if you want to sew. This is another Gunny Sacks, such an ethereal, just romantic style of dress. Um, and you can see here the bodice, we've got the corset style. And then we could see this one has the ribbon trim to actually match the um, colors in the fabric of the flowers. And there's more of these little fluttery sleeves. Um, and this one was altered, it was a maxi and now it's a, a, a midi. But a lot of the Gunny Sacks um, dresses like this are more, uh, as floaty or often more of a maxi style but just so you guys can get an idea of something to look out for and again this is a lot like the kind of Christy Dawn fabric but it's quite a bit more delicate this has a lining um, and then we have two more and again my goal today was just really to do a quick high level overview and we'll go into everything in much more detail in the sewing related content so this is a Shaheen and this is just, it's so hard to make these videos in the horizontal field of view to get the whole view of the dress and the detail. So forgive me if the quality is not the best of this video, but I <laughs> just wanted to put this up um, while I was thinking about it. But Shaheen, um, so this is a poly cotton blend. I don't like polyester like I was saying before, but I love the Shaheen styles. Just what a beautiful colorway and um, pattern design and just, just the little details of the matching um, print here that matches this belt that actually goes with the dress and then it matches in here. And then they also have the same print in the hemline of the skirt. So just very 
So I just love vintage. They're just such an eye for detail. So Shaheen's a really cool brand to look out for. Uh, really cool maxi skirts and dresses. And also I find with Shaheen, um, I should say this is probably a 60s dress. And here's the label. Um, Shaheen also has some larger sizes. I have even seen plus sizes in Shaheen. So if you're a little bit more curvy, um, this might be a great brand for you guys to look out for. Whereas Gunny Sacks does run, <clears throat> excuse me, quite small. And this last one is Malia Honolulu. And I like this style. It's got a nice little empire waist, um, has a cross over back here, and then it has a little bit of gathering in the skirt. Um, this one I just showed you by Shaheen was more of an A-line where this at least has some gathers. So there's a little more give in the actual um, skirt area, but this is a maxi. And these bright Hawaiian prints were very popular um, in the 60s and early 70s. Not Tommy Bahama style of Hawaiian, but um, I think these were done a little bit better. Um, and feel free to correct me if I have any of my decades wrong. I'm just, I didn't plan this, so I'm just kind of going off of memory and shooting from the hip. Um, like I said, I have collected these items for quite some time, um, and I'm not as familiar with the resale value and things like that as I haven't um, been on Etsy or eBay to buy any of these types of pieces in quite some time. But hopefully this gives you guys at least a starting point of what to look for. Um, I'd love to know in the comments box below, what are some of your favorite designers that you like that are have um, beautiful boho dresses or skirts or blouses that you have found that work really well for you, whether it's pulling inspiration from creating your own items or um, actually pieces that you, that you own and that you love. So hopefully this helped you all. Again, this was not meant to be any kind of a, um, like a braggy show and tell or anything like that. It truly was just to give you guys some inspiration and some guidelines of maybe what to look for or look into if you're creating your own pieces um, or you're wanting to add something to your wardrobe. So thank you again for stopping by and I hope to see you all very soon and stay tuned for my next video going over the sewing content related to these eras.